Taking time to learn a little bit about the current funding opportunities for the FY24 Melanoma Research Program, I am Amy Bunker, the Program Manager of the MRP. The intent of this recording is to provide you with a high-level overview of the program and this year's funding opportunities, and to let you know where you can find more information to answer any questions you may have when composing your applications. This is your first time in checking out a program under the Congressionally Directed Medical Research Programs, or CDMRP, then I encourage you to check out the CDMRP webpage and to visit the CDMRP channel on YouTube to learn more about us and how we got started, as I don't have time to go into a lot of detail today. However, a few key points that I think you should know is that CDMRP was created in 1992 thanks to the grassroots efforts of dedicated patient advocates or consumers in CDMRP speak. Each year, Congress adds targeted funds to the DOD budget for each of the programs managed under the CDMRP, and each program seeks to target underfunded or unmet needs specific to that program or field. All of our applications are reviewed through a two-tiered review process that involves a peer review and a programmatic review. Applications that are in fact recommended for funding will have the funds for the entire period of performance obligated up front. Here you can see a list of all of the FY24 CDMRP programs. Highlighted in green, I have the MRP and our appropriation of $40 million that we have to invest in melanoma research. The Melanoma Research Program, or MRP as I've been referring to it as, came into existence as a standalone program in FY19 with an appropriation of $10 million. Since that time, we have grown to our current appropriation of $40 million, as I mentioned on the previous slide. Our vision is to prevent melanoma initiation and progression and reduce hardship. We hope to do this by supporting the development of earlier interventions to enhance mission readiness, diminish melanoma burden, and improve the quality of life for service members, veterans, their families, and the American public. Before diving into the details of this year's funding opportunities, I wanted to give you an overview of the FY24 MRP program cycle. In January of this year, we had our annual vision setting meeting where we determined the investment strategy and identify what types of funding opportunities we're going to offer to meet the needs of that investment strategy. The funding opportunities were released in May of this year. And on the right hand side of the slide, you can see the application deadlines and the review dates. These dates are also provided on the cover page of each individual funding opportunity. All funding opportunities have letters of intent due as their pre-application on July 29th, and all full applications are due on August 26th. It is important to note that a letter of intent must be submitted by the stated deadline in order for an investigator to be able to submit their full application. There is no leeway in this requirement. Additionally, none of the MRP funding opportunities this year require applicants to be invited to submit a full application. Investigators are encouraged to start working on their full applications at their earliest convenience. Investigators should also note that once they submit their applications, they will not receive any intermediate status updates about their applications until the funding notification letters go out about three to six weeks after the completion of programmatic review, which will be held in February of 2025. For applications that are recommended for funding, they will enter into award negotiations, which will go through spring, summer of 2025. All awards will be made no later than September 30th but of 2025, uh, but they may start sooner depending on the nature of the award negotiations. Before diving into the specifics of the MRP funding opportunities or program announcements, I wanted to give you a little bit of a crash course on how to read them and where to find key information. The biggest single piece of advice I can give you is to please read through the entire funding opportunity at least once from beginning to end. I know that they're long, but they are written so 
that all applicants receive all of the information they need to make an informed decision as to whether their application, one, meets the goals of the program, and two, meets the intent of that specific funding opportunity. Moving on from there, uh, the FY24 MRP focus areas uh, for the IDEA Award, Melanoma Academy Scholar Award, and Team Science Awards are all described in Section 2A1 FY24 MRP focus areas for those three specific funding opportunities. Then the specific intent of each funding opportunity is described in the first few paragraphs of the award information section. Please pay particular attention to any items described under key aspects. The full application components are provided, um, the full application component section, excuse me, provides detailed instructions for what information to include in which specific attachments. And finally, the peer and programmatic review criteria are detailed in section 2E1 and reinforce the information that is provided in the award information and in the attachment instructions. Now we can start getting into some of the good stuff. As I mentioned, CDMRP programs uh, seek to fund research in underfunded areas and or unmet needs. The MRP has identified three such program priorities. Those are prevention and interception research, rare melanoma research, and survivorship research. Three of the FY24 MRP funding opportunities, the IDEA Award, Melanoma Academy Scholar Award, and Team Science Award, offer a list of focus areas, uh, these seven highlighted right here on the right half of the slide, to provide investigators additional information about the types of research projects that the MRP is interested in funding in order to adjust, address these three priorities. The full details of these program priorities and focus areas are, as I mentioned on the previous slide, uh, in, provided in the focus area section of these funding opportunities. The MRP seeks to address these program priorities by funding the full spectrum of research from early ideas uh, all the way to projects that are likely to have a near-term impact on melanoma research and or patient care. As I've said on the previous slide, uh, the IDEA Award, Academy Award, and Team Science Award are the MRP's general funding opportunities where investigators must justify in their application materials how their proposed research project addresses one of the seven outlined focus areas. None of these three opportunities allow for clinical trials. New for FY24 is the Survivorship Research Award, which I'll talk about more in another slide or two. And being offered for the third year is the Focus Program Award for Rare Melanomas. These two funding opportunities are in fact the only two FY24 MRP funding opportunities that do allow for clinical trials to be proposed. I'm only gonna to touch on a few key points for the, the IDEA Award, Academy Award, and Teen Science Award. But in particular, I um, want to note that uh, for the IDEA Awards, as indicated in bold, underlined, and highlighted in yellow, that investigators only need to submit a letter of intent by the stated deadline, and that they then may submit their full application by the full deadline. There is no longer a need for investigators to wait to be invited to submit a full application for the IDEA Award or any other FY24 MRP funding opportunity. For the FY24 um, Melanoma Academy Scholar Award, applicants should pay particular attention to the career guide eligibility described in Section 2C1B, as there have been some changes there. And um, I also want to point out with the Scholar Award that the career guide does not have to be at the same institution as the scholar. And finally, for the Team Science Award, I mostly just want to highlight that this is a meant to fund a multidisciplinary collaborative effort that many different types of research can be proposed. This is not just a translational science award, although those applications are welcome, but we're also looking to fund things like data science projects, device 
uh, development, and so on. Please be sure to read the award information section to get the full scope of what we're trying to accomplish with this award. As I mentioned, the Survivorship Research Award is being offered for the first time for the MRP. The needs of the melanoma survivors are diverse, and as you can see from this graphic, no one single discipline can address all of those needs. Therefore, the intent of this opportunity, simply put, is to fund a broad range of research where the intended goal of the research project is ultimately to improve the health and well-being of melanoma survivors, their family, and or caregivers. For the purposes of the MRP, a person becomes a melanoma survivor at the point that they receive their initial diagnoses. Furthermore, for the intent of this funding opportunity, the needs and impact of a melanoma diagnosis on the family members, friends, and caregivers of that melanoma survivor are also included within the purview of this funding opportunity. Please be sure to carefully read the intent of the SRA section, or it's under the award information section, which goes into more detail about the types of research that generally speaking would meet the intent of this funding opportunity, but I do want to emphasize that if something is worded vaguely and or may have had may have a broad interpretation that's truly intentional. I encourage PIs to read the instructions carefully, but and make sure they're providing the necessary information to explain how their proposed project is intended to improve the health and well being of those affected by a melanoma diagnosis. The focus program award for melanomas, just real quick, is intended to fund two to three independent but related research projects that work towards addressing an overarching question related to rare melanomas. This can be a broad spectrum of research projects covering from basic biology to clinical trials, quality of life, and so on. The question that's being addressed can be specific to a single rare melanoma or can be applicable to multiple rare melanoma subtypes. Investigators should note that a specific definition of rare melanomas is not provided in the funding opportunity. And again, this is intentional as there is no standard definition of a rare melanoma in the field. Therefore, it is on the PI to make sure the application materials justify how the proposed research meets the intent of the funding opportunity. A few notes about the melanoma consumer collaboration aspect that investigators will see mentioned in the Teen Science Award, the Focus Program Award, and the Survivorship Research Award. Uh, incorporating melanoma consumers within the research team has become a bigger focus for the MRP in recent fiscal years. This is an optional, unscored component of the Teen Science and Focus Program Awards and is a required scored component of the Survivorship Research Award. For the intent of these mechanisms, consumers are melanoma survivors, their family members and or caregivers who can provide lived experience with melanoma as part of the research team. The collaboration between the researchers and the consumers can take a variety of shapes and this collaboration is not just relevant to clinical research projects. I strongly encourage investigators who are interested in any of these three funding opportunities to carefully read the portion of the award information section where collaboration with melanoma consumers is described and to also review the references that are included within those funding opportunities. Those references are by no means a thorough review of the resources available to investigators, but I've provided them to you to give you tools to get started uh, if you've never engaged with this consumer community before. I will leave you with a few final notes, which are snippets of questions and answers that you will find in the FY24 MRP Frequently Asked Questions document that is available on the MRP website. So please go read through that. I, I, again, they are frequently asked questions that people ask me all the time, so I have provided responses to them there. Here is a link to the MRP website and a QR code and the mailbox for the and, and the MRP mailbox. 
I thank you for your attention and I wish you the best with your FY24 MRP applications.